All right, let's talk about the MCG yesterday. This was another really entertaining showdown, this one. It was Hawthorne and Essendon, and prior to the game, the 84 Premiership team was on display with a lap of honour there. Look at those names, Lordo. I mean, that's boys' own stuff there. Uh, I, I didn't realise until... Uh, Timmy! I didn't realise until looking at... Is that Tony Elshaw? Tony Elshaw, yes. Yeah. Um, they were down remarkably in, in, at three-quarter time, but then she'd sort of swung some changes. So nine goals to two in the last yeah, quarter? Yeah, it was. And, uh, yeah, I remember uh, the, Louis Richard said, this is Sheedy's premiership. I yeah. think it's one of the most famous lines if it was Louis Richards in that uh, grand final. And he, he swung the magnets. Paul Weston uh, did some amazing things. Leon Baker was phenomenal. But, yeah, I know when I walked into the club, I was just blown away by the history uh, mm. from what those guys created. And it was, sweet, era, was it? sweet revenge, too, that yeah, year, wasn't it? Was, it? Yeah. Yeah. it was a great era because they hadn't won one for a long time. So 84 is years, held very yeah. dearly, isn't it? For sure. For sure, man. He played Mark Harvey and Bomber Thompson at 17, 18 years of age. So, can I just ask about... I mean, they're obviously all of those names that we saw there, like you know, Watson, Vanderhaar, Billy Duckworth. I mean, all just like household names for resident supporters. Am I going too far in suggesting that Archie Perkins might just end up a household name himself? Oh, he's a very good player and he was very good yesterday. It's a big call to say that. No, that's way too early to say that. But I yeah. thought he was just about the best on the ground last night. Uh, yesterday, 24 disposals and two goals. More importantly, laid 12 tackles, the most on the ground. Had eight clearances, the most for the Bombers, and nine score involvements, the most. So they've been waiting for a few years. He's obviously always had the ability. He's played half forward. He's played a bit of half back. But I do like him running through the midfield, Lordo. And yesterday showed how good he was. I think on TJ's point, he could be their next superstar. I I agree with that. Uh, he's got a long way to go. But of that draft, Cox, Reed, and Perkins, he looks by far and away the best. And he led the midfield, which was where they won this game. It was a really good game of footy in tough conditions. It was free-flowing as up and back. Both sides moving the ball from their back half. What separated it was this. So to kick 10 goals from stoppage, led by him, that was the difference in the game. And Sam Mitchell would be filthy on that because one area of the Hawks, which they are strong, is through the midfield. But it, he's, he's Durham. Like that, he's arrived as well. So when you look at the new generation of Essendon midfielder, this is what it's going to be. There's Caldwell. Here's Gresham coming up as a half forward. He finishes nicely. Setterfield was excellent. So there's no Parrish. He's injured, there's no shield, and Hobbs was left out as well because he's probably just a little bit one-paced in that space. So the balance that they had, Perkins, you mentioned, I thought they were so tough and strong through the midfield. Kane, I haven't heard your views on the Bombers. What do you think they should be aiming to achieve this like, year? To me, they, there's still some real red flags because they refuse to defend backline transition. So until you can be an unconditional defensive unit, I'd be going and showing what Sydney did yeah. on Friday night to the Essendon side and say, until we bring this on defence, we're going to be a side that finishes somewhere from 9th to 16th. Yeah. That, that's where I see them. Once they fix that defensive stuff and their intensity when they don't have the footy, then that's when they'll arrive as a footy club. The match review office will be required to adjudicate on this moment from Mason Redmond, made contact with John Newcomb. It looks pretty clear cut and under the changes in the rules in the off-season with any form of uh, contact to their head, I, to me it would have, I think, been merited a, a week off. But we saw last week, guys, uh, George Hewitt uh, yeah. basically make contact with Lockie Neal and I just think that has muddied the situation in a round uh, or an opening round sense before they adjudicate so that can, they, one. They could not give him a week after what happened last week, Damo. That will be the, the defence if they decide to take it through, I would have thought. If, if, they, if they give him a week, I'd, I'd say Essendon, you'd appeal that and just show the, the two from last yeah. week. We can go, how do you get off? If they gave Hewitt one, it just would have been clear for the entire year, particularly that case. Now there's some, uh, some grey around it. Welcome back to the Sunday Footy Show. A day of celebration at the MCG yesterday for the Essendon Football Club, honouring its 84 flag-winning team and then going on to, uh, well almost replicate what the Bombers did in 84 by getting the better of Hawthorne. Yeah, and it was an entertaining game of football. Straight kicking by the Bombers as well. 17 goals, 5, string of 4, Langford 3. It was quite Langford but did his job when he needed to and we spoke about Perkins earlier on in the program. But this man Jake Stringer. So when he looks fit like he does at the moment and he was covering the ground, he plays some really good football and the Essendon supporters seeing Jake Stringer for the first time yesterday would look at him and a trimmed version of Jake Stringer and this is what you get. You get a very good output from him and it's so good to see him fit and firing and he was good yesterday for the Bombers particularly early it was hot it was uh, it was a hard game yesterday there wasn't much defense play in this game which allowed some holes throughout the game but Jakey Stringer off to a flyer. Zach Merritt is a star he's been the Bombers best player for so many years now and it's the footy smarts he's got smarts that not many other players have and 
If you could lead to a player, uh, or he'd be top 10 in the AFL with how good he is kicking inside 50, Kane, and yeah. he just does it week after week. He, you know, they'll start tagging him again. That's his big challenge, to get through a tag, but he's a wonderful player. Yeah, so the Hawks had Finn McGuinness as a sub, which is an interesting yeah. sub in itself. Came on just after three-quarter time, I think it was, and went to him. But I love the rundown tackle yeah. of Newcomb there. That, I think that's what he's added to his game. He's more demanding uh, on his teammates. They got a couple of new recruits who I thought were really influential yesterday for the Hawks. So Mackay did a real job on Mitch Lewis. But not only that, he did this. So, I mean, he's always been a really solid intercept marker, and he's had a lot of opportunities because North conceded so many entries but yesterday he beat a really good player and then he added this to his game so it was a flawless debut for him at the Bombers they'd be wrapped with what they got and then there's Gresham as well if he can get his head around I'm not a midfielder mm. I'm there to do this to pressure to harass and when I get my opportunities and it may only be 10 touches I think he had 11 yesterday or 12 touches that's what he's got to do maximum damage per touch and that was a really courageous mark so I thought they're two big recruits that they paid big money to get, had a big influence on the result of this game. So, Kane, can I ask you, would, would Collingwood be regretful that they lost Jack Ginnivan? Well, he was good in the first half, to get nine touches in the first quarter, and he was hitting the scoreboard. To answer your question, probably not yet. I, th I thought that was a win-win for both. I thought he needed the change of scenery. And Long sleeves? Collingwood got short. But I'm big on one percenters, right? If it's 30 degrees at the MCG... Don't wear a long sleeve jumper. Now, I may be reading too much into it, but he had 12 touches in the first half, and I did not see him after half time. I don't know if he overheated. He got hot. He cooked. He overheated. He cooked himself. He, well, you try and cool yourself down with ice vests. His arms might have been itching. Yeah, we've got clubs that have freezers. There's Chole kicking his first goal for the Hawks. We've got clubs that hire freezers to keep yourself cool. And he's running around the MCG. Right? Some of the great players over the years yeah. have worn long sleeves, Kane. So yeah. it's more. It's, if I had a list of things to blame, very much. <laughs> 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 it might be that his team gets smashed. It might be that he's not as fit as he needs to so be. So you don't think you overheated? It could be mental. No, he certainly didn't. Do you ever, Kane, can I just ask, do you ever, when you're doing like your, your 42k run after the yeah. show each Sunday, do you ever sort of think to yourself at any stage, I wish I hadn't have gone with that? No, not really, because I'm big on, I'm big on preparation of yeah. one percenters. Like, to think that it's 28 degrees, that you're, everyone's cramping up, full body cramps. Chole had to be subbed off because he was cramping, and he touches the ball two times in the second half. I go, I wonder if he was hot. <laughs> well, he would have been in the boats in the first half, but I don't think he is in the boats. And, uh, Perkins was terrific. Warble, Stringer and more. Uh, All we'll right. Just talking though, Damo threw up Tucky, Michael Tucky. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. How many flags? Seven, wasn't Seven. it? Yeah. And Played the 11 grand finals. The greatest player in Essendon's history, yeah. arguably. Yeah. yeah. He, was, he was doing the same yeah, thing. And in the 87 Although grand final where he wore short sleeve, they got done. Yeah. To Kane's point. Yeah. <laughs> but also with global warming now, yeah. that wouldn't have been as hot. Well, if, yeah. if it was that good, everyone would be doing it. Yeah, Bartel, I think if even on the day like that, would have gone short sleeves. It wasn't every week. But 